presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robin, how you doing, man? Yes, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner, primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, uh, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling and proud with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here, yeah, sitting in for Tom O'Brien. This is Friday the 13th. This is the 3 o'clock, 3 that's a seven minutes past three o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. Just I want to talk about this really quickly. Uh, I do the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock to 11 every market day here at TFNN. Done it for over 20 years. And I also have a service called the Opening Call. A daily newsletter, a very detailed newsletter, and I'll, I, we'll talk about that in a little while. But I just wanted to show you there's a technique that I developed years ago. I, for, my, for those of you who are subscribers or are going to subscribe to my newsletter, you'll be you're getting 8, 9, 10, 11 um, webinars that I've done. And each one really does a whole bunch of different things that I've learned over the years that I teach in these webinars. And then I repeat them and show them charts through my throughout the day. This is called the long, narrow rectangle formation. There's a time where a chart doesn't matter what it is. Very often it's the futures. This is the E-mini S&P futures trading at 43.59 down 21, where it goes into a long, narrow, sideways trading range, and it stays there. And every time you think it's going to break down. It holds the line and uses it as a propellant, and it goes up to the top line. And that border, you think, oh, this time it's going to break to the upside. No, nope, it gets reversed, and it's just like a ping pong ball. Eventually, it goes to, in the Chapman Wave, the fourth or fifth highest peak, a D or an E, alphabetized, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the way up, same thing on the way down. And it goes to an E or D, and then it pulls back. If it takes out this halfway mark, I just made it kind of faint. I'll make it a little thicker right now, and I'll make it blue because it's it's, now at this point it's really important. There we go. This blue line, I usually do this by eye. So my eye says just around about here at about 43.57. That's the midpoint of the channel. What happens is if it goes above, and that above is at a D or an E, then there's a really good chance that if it takes out the middle line, this, this horizontal midpoint of the channel, there's a really good chance it's not only going to take uh, go to the bottom of the, of the trend line, the base, it's going to take it out. But what happens is it takes it out, and then it revisits that because it's always so quick that it's like I haven't said goodbye to everybody. I, I, I just pop back up so I can say goodbye. And it goes, but if it then takes out on the way up after that, you see the down arrow, after that potential up arrow, there's a chance it could revisit the upper trend line and you stay in this range. Well, lo and behold, it did exactly that. Then it popped down again. It went back above the, the left side low, and now it's stuck in this range. So let's revisit it in a little while, but I am impressed. Now I'm going to tell you what I'm impressed about today. I'm impressed about two things. One is JP Morgan came out with earnings. Uh, they evidently, I mean, some of it was very bad, but some of it was very good. It's always this mixed result with the banks. But the banks, the, the, the marketeers loved it. So it gaps up this morning. It, it closed um, yesterday at about 148, uh, 145.50. It opens this morning. At 148.50, uh -uh, not good enough. It screams up to the 153 level, and now it's trading at 148.20, up 2.35. So it is now underneath the opening price. So that's one thing. So that's really important. Why? 
because it impacts the XLF, which is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if the financials are lagging, it's a drag on the market. It's a drag. It's, it's telling us about the economy. It's, it's telling us about a lot of things. So I'm just putting that out there to say until the XLF, this is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund trading at 33.20, up six cents, still up cents, uh, a couple of cents because uh, Wells Fargo came out, a couple came out with earnings, um, and that gap up, it's still a gap up in J.P. Morgan, uh, not a great looking candle at this particular point. But if at any point in the next week, I'm not going to give it two weeks, I'm giving it next week, it really speed is of the essence now. So if it's able to tag 39.92, the 200 period moving average, and then close above it, I would say that that is really good action. That's number one. Number two is the fact that if you're looking at this weekly chart, this orange 200 period moving average in the XLF has been holding very nicely, and we're making, yes, we're making lower highs and lower lows, but this candle, I'm going to call it for the moment, I'm not going to go into it, I'll do that maybe on Monday in my show, is an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. If there is a move next week on a daily basis, even though it's a weekly chart, and on any day there's a close above 33.45, that's a big ask, but if there's one, then I would say that then you could tag the... Uh, 14 period exponential moving average and the five uh, nine period moving average, which is actually negative right now at 3381. All right, now let's go through the story. The Dow, I knew you. The Dow is now up 68 points. What a what a whippy day it's been. Uh, at 72, up 72, 33,703. We have begun a leg B. Uh, just for clarification, you see the little long here. We have a trading long, kind of aggressive trading long, three times long, but a small position. Uh, we are still short from August the 1st. That was the very high of the Dow at 35,679. That was the August 1st high. And we still hold that short, but we've got a trading long. I, it might sound confusing, but then you also have to go back to October right there where we went along the day of the low. And we're still long from the low of 2020, March of 2020. So these are different time cycle positions. This is a trading one because I'm not sure that this is going to last all that long, this, this rally. And then I think we have to do some testing. Do we have to break the 32? The reason why we went long on the 6th is that was an exact, I was talking about this on my show, there was an exact time match from the May 25th low of 32,586 the number of bars to the high of the 1st of August to the number of bars on the 6th matched exactly. And we were within a couple of hundred points of that left side low. And other techniques said, hey, this would be a really good opportunity just in risk reward to go long. And we are still long. We're taking some profits, but we are still long. I just wanted to get that out the way because the next thing we want to look at here is the S&P with the weekly chart. And I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, the S&P is down 15. The Dow's up 72. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. So a couple of things I wanted to tell you. Look, the S&P has come off nicely from the 42.16 low um, at the, um, I think it was the 2nd of October, 1st, 3rd of October. And it's just made a fractional higher high yesterday. So I call that a leg B. It's gray because the stochastics uh, under 80%. The MACD is not good. And the 9 pre moving average has not crossed positive. But it's really close and it's attempting to do it. In this environment, um, with the configuration that's going on, and this is uh, this is... It's kind of impressive that we're only down 20 points in the S&P and the Dow is actually up. Um, under other conditions, nervous, just n nervousness, not the technicals of the market, just the nervousness itself. We'd see the market pull back quite sharply. Um, and then as the day went on, uh, if especially with gold, uh, just I'm trying to mix the two things together because the one has to do with fear factor. Gold is up 58. And here we are with the S&P. Not bad. I mean, let's face it, S and P's. Uh, did I do that? Yes, S and P's right now uh, down 20. So this is what I'm looking at. The weekly charts, um, nine period moving average is under the 14 period moving average. I call this my technical tool of last resort, and because of it, I'm. I have to say that I now have to issue for my subscribers to opening call where I do my uh, maybe an hour long. I'm not sure. A video tomorrow of the overview of what, what's happened and what we're expecting and how all our positions have done this week. Most of them done really well. Um, I'm just going to say to you that that weekly negative 914 going pink after being green ever since right there, ever since the week of the 13th of January when it was down at 38.77 low, 4,003 high. Um, this is the first time it's gone pink in the weekly chart. I have to respect that. And that just says you can have counter trend rallies, but until that turns green again, you just have to think of this as, as a, a big digestive phase. And you've got your one to one, a little bit more than one to one to the downside in this H pattern. On my show, I'll talk about the pattern I call the dreaded H. But we took out decisively the left side low right there. Uh, I think that was at about 43.35. So now what's really important about the S&P is, yes, it's holding. You can see pink nine period moving average. Almost it would have tried to turn green today. 
but this is uh, not yet. And the day is young. We've still got 30, uh, 35 minutes or so to go, maybe a little more. And I would be surprised if the market doesn't feel kind of nervous about holding positions, not the market, but fund managers, and do some selling into the close because, uh, I mean, the power of this long, narrow rectangle, let's just check it out right now, is the price it should hold within that at this point. Yep, there it is. It's back in again. So it popped up to a peak. E oh, I shouldn't have put that down arrow because it, I thought it was about to turn pink. It didn't. This is the down arrow right here. That's a leg E, and then it goes to a peak E. The reason why I shouldn't have done that, I was busy about to do the, the show, so I did it real quickly. Uh, that should have been a plus sign, a little plus sign over the D, because the green nine period moving average held. Now it's gone pink. But look, it's just back in the range. This is the power of a long, narrow rectangle, and this is a one minute chart, but it's the same thing. In the evenings, when the futures close at five o'clock, you can go on a Friday all the way through the weekend in the narrow range or overnight for tw you know, 12 hours. You can have this narrow range stuck in a 20-point range. All right, just wanted to mention how we, we've got magnet lines. This is the 200-period moving average. I spoke about it. I said in the den, watch how, we, how, this, how the price deals with the magnet line. There it is. This is the magnet line, 200-period moving average. Look at that. Repel, repel, repel. Pops up, holds for four bars, repelled. Now we're going down to the bottom. That makes the 43.50 to 43.48 level very important over the next 30 minutes. Now let's get back to I wanted to show you this because remember in the chapter wave, I'm always looking for higher peaks to count them alphabetically, sequentially, A, B, C, D, et cetera. At D, other things can happen. Well, we are made a D in the 10-minute E-mini right there. So let's see what happens next. Now let's go on to what we were looking at. So the weekly chart of the S&P says, I have no choice. You've got a sell mode. In the daily chart, it almost went to a, a buy signal, but it isn't yet even in a buy signal. If it goes from a buy signal to a buy mode, it means it should go to at least four higher peaks. This is just a peak B. But right now, it's in the middle of a range. Look at the QQQ. It was doing fabulously. Look at this ugly candle. Not a good. Now, we've been long. Uh, we probably, we might get taken. No, we haven't been taken out yet. We've taken nice profits on the way up. We got along uh, about five, six sessions ago. Uh, last Friday, we got exactly last Friday, and we've run it up. And now the QQQs are in this range where I call this chapter wave inside track repellent zone. And look at the se sequence of these tops that have formed. There's almost a symmetry in the number of bars on this declining trend line. I always say, how does a how does a market know to to match to almost to the penny sometimes these trend lines? I, you just, it's its amazing. It's as if there's, I have a theory on it, and it says that we're in a sell mode, and each rally emotionally gets worn out on the way up from the baseline, and that's how you can get this diagonal. Yeah, right here. This is where emotion got too excessive, and now we pull back. So that's the only way I can explain it. Mathematically, I don't know how you can explain it. But it does say that the tide is declining, and therefore every rally is going to fail at a slightly lower high. All right, well, that's the QQQs. And it's really important for the weekly chart, which is still holding positive. In other words, it's still a buy mode in the weekly chart because the nine is still over the, the black 14 period moving average. The green line is over it. But the MACD's week, the stochastics week, the on balance volume is still strong. So we're going to have to watch this closely, and I like to put it together with the SMHs. Look, the SMHs, the Semiconductor Index, went to a peak C. Where did it stall? I don't want to go into this too much right now. There's just too many things to look at. I was asked if I could look at many, um, ma many stocks. I'll do that. Um, yeah, so um, this is the SMH, 148.47 down 369.00. Look at the absolute perfect matching uh, decline. And this is a, called the uh, falling axe, inverted falling axe formation that I, a technique that I developed. And it took out and it made this arch formation. And then it tried to make the V shape or cup formation. And it stalled where? Right at the 200 period exponential. Uh, sorry, right at the inside track repellent zone. That means 
that you've got exactly the same price movement up from that low to that high. So now it's ready for some kind of a pullback. And where the semiconductors go, that's kind of important because mostly that's where the QQQ and the general market tends to go. So uh, you've got to be a little bit careful here um, with the general market uh, having a very mixed performance and leadership in the Dow 30. And it's just on a very few stocks. I'd say this is a time, obviously, for caution. IWM Russell 2000 looks terrible. It's about to take out the left side low over there. And now I want to get to the gold area. So let's go. The GC is now up uh, 58.4. It's whole, Oh, I think that gold, is that closed? Uh, anyway, it's at 1941.4. I'll talk about this 200 period moving average that was a repellent zone. And that's at 1956. Uh, 19, I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. A question came in. What would, what would, um, how was it phrased? Uh, basically, what would reverse gold and the GDX? Um, let me put it this way. Because at this particular, the gold, I mean, if you look at the GDX, this is the gold miners, it was acting terribly. It's been making, look at the weekly chart, 38.25 on the 5th of uh, May, the week of the 5th of May of this year. 
plummets down to the 28s, bounces up to the 32 and a half, 33 area, and then does a one to one and just misses the exact one to one in the weekly, but it does it in the, yeah, it does it in the daily because it's a different uh, frame of that of reference that I use, and it goes to 25.62, and now from 25 to 28.91, that is a, a single leg a up. That is a big move. The only thing that I think would change that, because remember, this is a fear trade. This is a, where over the, the thousands of years, when there's a crisis, people go to gold. I, I mean, I have, during during the, the World War II, I know a lot of people who had gold in the heels of their shoes. That's how they managed to pay for things, uh, little bits of gold. Um, they had no money. It was the money wasn't worth anything, and they were in forests in Siberia, whatever it is, and yeah, it's been a, a, a token of of money that you could use under uh, dire circumstances. So that's kind of what it does today. It's very different to say a Bitcoin. It's got people try to relate the two. They really separate things entirely. One is financial purely, and this is. In a way, it's financial, but it really is a currency of fear, and it's gold. All right, so within that context, what we're doing is if over the weekend I can't see it happening, but you asked me the question, so my answer is if there is even a hint of some kind of slowdown or some kind of completion or some kind of, um, some kind of amelioration of the tensions in the Middle East, I think you can see a sudden pullback. I mean, up up this high, uh, GC is up 58.7. Silver is up. So so this is up 4.1 percent, up 0.91 at 22.87. About to hit a resistance level at about 23. What's gonna be Monday? 23.11. Um, gold. Let me just tell you what the percentage is. Gold is up 3.12 percent. The GDX is up 4.34 um, percent, and you can see there's a lot of resistance here. But as I say, money will keep flowing into gold if this tension lasts another, even another few days, um, and it's, it'll obviously last a lot more than that. Um, and as Duffy says, in the, in the, the intentions in the Middle East have barely begun, unfortunately. I, there's absolutely no question that that is the issue. So here, if I'm looking at a GDX and someone said, well, what would you do? Um, where would it turn around? I, I just don't see it now as a, as a very quick thing. I can see, uh, let me just do this. I don't like to do it that way. I have to do it this way. Hmm. Yeah, we've already done more than a one to one of that extension. Yeah, so the whole thing is 20, 29.73 is the 200 period exponential moving average uh, resistance in the GDX. And if I do it just a simple trend line from that, from where I picked the high, or that high there, oh, that comes in at about uh, 29, is that 35 or so? 29, that'll be Monday, 29.43. So somewhere in the 2940s, that's where you might, between that and 2973, you could start to see a lot of resistance because this move was the kind of move that it's really like a three-day move. It should actually have, as far as I'm concerned, it really should have started on Monday or Tuesday. So it played catch-up, and now it's maybe overbought, but not overbought to the extent that what what we could be seeing looking out. All right, so the next thing we want to the question that came in is, could I look at, so that was the S&P. So the weekly chart says, un, un, unless the S&P can tackle the 40, I'd say 43.90 to 44.10 area over the next week or so uh, without first breaking 4,300, and it said 43.25 is not a difficult thing to do if Sunday night is weak. Um, that just says to me, the, there is limited upside now. The pattern that I often talk about in my in my methodology is, if I can find it right here, there we go, uh, click on this one, is a pattern that I call the dreaded H. And what is the dreaded H? The dreaded H is, if I can just move this chart away, there it is. So the price comes down in a straight line and then it tries to bounce. And that bounce makes an H pattern. 
and it often fails at a peak A or a B. If it fails at a peak B, the second highest peak, and takes out that left side low, it can go a lot lower. That's what you saw in the S&P. Well, in this particular instance, we are forming yet another arch formation. Oops, this was the one I wanted. This just shows you the Chapman wave. We look for a starting, uh, a low that's a starting position. Count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them. Uppercase on the way up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But what you want to see is a buy signal upgrade to a buy mode. And that says you should get to at least a D. That's where other things can happen. So that's when you get a buy mode. We have not quite made a buy mode. Almost did it because the stochastic went to 79%. It almost did 80%. And if it held in the 4350s, I would have said, we've got a buy mode. There should be at least a C and maybe even a D. But we haven't got that yet. So the pattern we're looking at now is this pattern right here. And it's come down sharply, uh, came down sharply and failed at a peak A and took out the left side low. Now that we've got another arch formation, I'll just draw it in. And if that fails, you've got to watch that left side low, 42.16.45. But a lot of things can happen between now and then. And that's just the pattern we're looking at, that there could be an arch formation because it's it could change from the cup to the arch. The markets just go in cup arch formations all the time. And we're going to be watching to see what happens because if on Monday or Tuesday – you're able to rebound, for, not you, but the S&P rebounds to 4350s. That's really good. If we open really poorly on Sunday night and Monday we come in really poorly, that's going to be a very big negative. All right, so I wanted to do that. Next question came, just could I look at SDKL? Yeah, this is one that I've focused on over the years. Um, haven't looked at it for ages. This is um, Sun Opta Inc. Um, and I can't, off the top of my head, I should remember, I think it has... Let me just do this for one second. Nice candle today. It's actually up 73 cents at 3.58. It's up, wow, 28%. And let me just put this in here. Sun Opta. I should know this because I'm... It's a leading global company focused on natural... Yeah, I thought that's what it was. Natural food ingredients, sourcing, organic food, and specialty foods. Yeah. We want to say, I think we even had this for a brief moment, and we were not in for a long time. Nice move, but I had said that what you want to see is that it needs it. It must not close. It must not break three twenty, three dollars and twenty cents in the next day or two, and try its best to make a higher high than today, going to the three eighties. Uh, three seventy six was the high, but really the weekly chart says it just could be a news related pop up, but it's got a lot of work to do to really become. Uh, an instrument that can move much higher. Uh, the Dow's up 10, uh, the Dow's up 17, S&P's down 23. We're right back. Let's see how our rectangle formation is. Stuck right in the middle of the rectangle. Isn't it amazing how long these things can last? If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. 
Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Tom O'Brien! Hi folks, Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien on this Friday the 13th. And I just wanted to show you, remember in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're looking for at least a D and that's where other things can happen. Well, you got your five minute chart, went to a peak D and now it's forming this arch formation. And finally, you've got the price pulling back underneath the one minute rectangle formation. Look at this, here we are. And you've got a D in the 10 minute chart. So we're gonna have to watch the close here in the last of the 17 minutes or whatever it is, going into the final bell. Look, there we are, you just start to turn down, down 31 and 43, 49. So left, left the rectangle, um, said goodbye to the rectangle. That means it could pop once more. If it does pop, then this whole area of 30, uh, 43, 52 that was support, now that becomes 52 to 53, becomes the resistance if there is an attempt to a pop-up. Now let's get going to the, uh, so a couple of things we want to look at here. Um, crude oil had a huge move today. It, it, because of the uh, con conflict in the Mideast, Oil is in play. There's just no question about it. I had said that there's a chance that if we took out the 80, 81 support level, we would go down to the 78, 77s. But that was before uh, last weekend. Now it's something very different because crude oil is going to be a, it, it's a weapon for many countries. They can use it um, and abuse it. That's just the way it is. So it's up. And if Crude oil at any point in the next three days, going to Wednesday of next week, uh, if crude oil closes above 90, this is a different pattern altogether. Even though it's got a peak D and was a horrible candle last week, in the weekly chart, um, I'm going to say to you, this is something to watch because if there is a move below 81, it's at 87 right now, but if there is for whatever reason, um, that's something very different. But there's a really good chance that this oil is back in play to the upside. Looking at natural gas, NG, it's had a really sharp pullback. We were talking about this the other day. Um, it, it spiraled up to this peak E slash B. Uh, in, the, in the weekly chart, you've got this rectangle. And I said, I want to see two out of three weeks of closes above this natural gas above 3.343. Now, this is the continuous contract. So let me go to UNG, which is a little different. This went to peak D in the daily, in daily chart with a beautiful left side, right side cup formation and the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone worked its magic four, four days out of four and it got repelled, but it's still uh, looking good yesterday. Now it's just gapped down. So UNG natural gas is this rectangle is still really important. Just as the narrow rectangle in the one minute chart I was showing you, a little show, little pops to the upside and they came back. I'm going to draw the midpoint in. Here's your midpoint uh, for natural gas. Natural gas, if it treats this as support, that's this area at about uh, six, uh, trading is 748 right now, 687. Let's call it 680. If it holds 680, 
throughout next week, I'd say this is a good chance that moving into the later part of October, the early part of November, that's where I think natural gas actually has a potential to finally break the rectangle. Look, it's raised the base of support there. So this is important for those of you who are interested in the UNG or the natural United States National Gas Fund or natural gas futures. So uh, this is a very important pullback. How much it pulls back or whether it stabilizes soon is going to be really important. Um, had a question, where did it go? Uh, could I look at a couple of gold stocks? Yes, Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining is a very very good candle today, a uh, good price move. The candle has pulled back from the high of 39.78. It's a 39.34. This is still only a leg A, a gray leg A, because the stochastic's not even at 80%. It's at 63 right there. The MACD is very strong, not as strong as it was, but very strong. And today, the nine period finally crossed positive. That is really important. That says 38, the 3820s will be key support in the very short term if there's a sudden pullback in the next day or two. But um, it also has the next upside target is at about 40.33. Today's high is 39.78. And then it starts to, it's a little more difficult because you're looking at the uh, black 14 period moving average right here in the weekly chart. And the pink nine is still way, it's still very, this is a very negative weekly chart. Even if you go to the GDX, look, the GDX, this is still, look at the nine period, way under the 14. So it's the daily, this is your little speed road, is the daily chart that has to give you the impetus to, this is the torque from the daily that takes you up and then the momentum follows in the weekly. But the weekly, look, he has a down downtrend line, not a down channel. This doesn't match the, this little mini down channel right here where I've got the channel wave inside track propellant zone and it went right to that level. Look, beautiful support, a propellant zone, and now you're going to get to the repellent zone. So we'll see what happens. This is an early, maybe a very early stage for the GDX. I don't know. Uh, I, my thinking about what's going on throughout the world says that gold should actually now be in play for a little while. Um, it's the speed of the move that we've just seen. Maybe at a certain point, it just settles down and says, okay, we're up now, we can have a digestive phase, but we've really gone off the low and we're way off the low. That might be the way we look at it. Next question um, that I had was, uh, let me see. Yes, can I look at the uh, Bitcoin? So BTC, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is trading. It made a peak D. Remember the Chapman wave? Always looking for Ds and see if it pulls back or does it recycle. In this case, it's pulled back. Uh, it's trading at 26,835. Uh, and the 200-period moving average of 27,730 is very strong resistance. So just keep that in mind. And if it does pull back underneath, because you might find now that Bitcoin is not of as much value because the, the speculation has now gone to gold, uh, we're looking at 26,220 as key support in the short term. And you can see the weekly. Look at that 200-period moving average was a support level, and now it's a resistance level. So just keep that in mind that it has... It's not quite in favor as we speak. The next question came in. Could I look at, oh, Apple? So Apple is down $1.86 at 178.87. Had a very nice move. The technicals are all very good. So, how it handles the support of, it's at 178.90. How it handles the support of 170, right there, 177. If it, if it takes out and closes under 177, it could make that arch formation. Right now, it's holding very nicely. The weekly chart, though, is not a very pretty sight. Uh, and the monthly chart is just having a digestive phase after a spectacular move. Amazon? Oh, I had a question about um, what was it now? It was a retail area. Oh, I had this written down. I, oh, it was something that I noticed. Let me see if I can find it here. All my notes, if I can find it. Um, I believe uh, Amazon. So Amazon um, made a PD in the Chapman Wave back in early September in the 145 area, plunged almost to the 200-period moving average, had a very nice rally, but the stochastic is still weak.
Mankey is pretty good, and the nine period moving average hasn't turned. Oh, VTX, VTX. No, VTX. VTX helps facilitate product sales on Amazon, eBay, Alibaba. And look where it is, $4.93. Doesn't look very good. I'll be back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman City for Tom O'Brien. And this is fascinating. I, the market system, what a challenge every day. Just it's so beautiful to, to be able to look at all these different techniques and see how they pan out. Remember, I spoke about it and I put it in the den. I said there's 200 period moving average of 43. Um, I, what, what was the price I'd said at the time? Because it's been moving down since then. I think I said 43.58 or 43.60. So look at this. Here we are. Look at that orange pink. This is the orange line right there. And look where we are right at this moment. We're at this orange line. Remember I spoke about the long, narrow rectangle could drive you crazy as you think it's going to break down when it when it hits the bottom uh, support level of the of the horizontal line. And then when it goes to the top, the thing's going to break out and break out. And then it comes right back and goes like a ping pong ball in and out, in and out. And then when it goes down below the uh, support line it can come back and how it tests the in this case i made it the blue line that said this is the uh, this is the repellent zone and if it closes above that a couple of times that's going to be very important well here we are so we've got another seven minutes maybe there'll be weakness going to the close but we've been in this range for two hours uh 1 since 1 what's the time so almost four o'clock for quite a few hours right 
in this narrow range. On a day like this, you wouldn't expect that. All right, so I just thought I'd mention a couple of things that as we're going to go into the final a few minutes, let me just do this. The vo I never once spoke about the volatility index. Now it's time to talk about the volatility index because on a Friday, it is rare over the last few years. I'm not talking about weeks, but on the last few years, for the VIX index, you can see this chart right here. That's the monthly chart on the right. This is the weekly chart. How many, how few, it, this is the weekly chart. Only a couple of times did it close green um, at the end of the end of the week. And this is way back here. This is um, uh, the week of the 3rd of December. Next week was red. In other words, the market rallied sharply. This was right here. The following week was up. That was the week of the 29th of April. So now what we're doing is we're under the 200 premium. It's all get free. But look what's happened. It's not anywhere close to the other VIX index. Is the VIX going to go into the 2832 area? I think so, but not yet. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. Basil Chapman signing off.